Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 Circuit Feature Tournament number two. My name is TJ, and I am joined by Kriparian. Krip, I've... Did you just whisper? Yep. <laughs> okay. Whew. Hearing Krip whisper. Uh, have you... Uh, <laughs> these are the... Um, this is probably the... The, the matches so far from Onan that I've enjoyed the most because mm-hmm. um, we're, we're seeing some, I think, some re- refreshing styles, at least from Dog. from Dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed those last matches. What, what were your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love it when players take the risks involved to tweak three brand new decks, or in his case, four brand new decks. Well, I guess if you discount Drew, it is three brand new decks to mm-hmm. kind of play around uh, the meta, what people are bringing, and just play against that. Um, I think it, it succeeds more time than not, but I think it requires a lot of time and a lot of preparation, so that's why we don't see it so frequently, and a lot of players don't have the willingness to take upon that risk and, and that really responsibility of um, delivering on their strategy. So it's great to see Dog try and succeed, and uh, hopefully it encourages more players in the future to try the same. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see as we move forward. But we are going to jump into the lower match next. It is going to be between Lead Paint from Grand National Champions, uh, a teammate of mine, and uh, Astrogation from New Order Esports, who, uh, of course, mentioned earlier, Astrogation, his teammate ever, Siction, uh, was the uh, player to qualify from feature tournament number one. He was the winner there to qualify for the PEX Prime mm-hmm. Final. So be great for a team like New Order, uh, who's sort of an up-and-coming Hearthstone team, to have two players qualify, so I'm sure Astrogation really wants to win this one. These guys are playing more standard decks. We haven't seen Astrogation's Warrior, but Druid and Zoo Warlock for him, and Lead Paint, I'm sure it's Secret Paladin, Zoo Warlock and Druid for him. I'm surprised to see uh, the Face Hunter band, aren't you? Uh, I mean, Face Hunter is regarded as a deck that just isn't very good overall, um, and we see Lead Paint playing very standard decks. Yeah. So, how bad could his decks be against Face Hunter? Well, Seeker Paladin struggles against Face Center, and so does Zoo Warlock. So, uh, Druid is sort of hit or miss. We saw earlier mm-hmm. exactly how those matchups sort of go. It sort of comes down to a race a lot of times, unless Druid can get a board clear really early. Um, and so it's it's really close. But having two really poor matchups against Face Center, I guess Lead Paint just realizes he doesn't want to play against it. But I, mm-hmm. I would think that Warrior would also be a really strong deck against this lineup of lead paint and we're actually going to see astrogation just queue up that patron warrior right away all right well i think patron warrior overall does quite well against this paladin deck but um it really relies on you making some magic happen with that combo mm-hmm. it's uh it's something that's very difficult to stop i think it's actually nearly impossible to stop once you have like three full health Grim Patrons, I think you just win unless you die next turn. Yeah. Maybe a Tyrion. You can plop down a Tyrion, and if he has no activators left for Patron, it'll absorb all three of those shots, but that's, uh, that's, that's about, about it. it. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, I saw... I, I casted a sealed tournament yesterday, and I saw uh, somebody play around with a bolster Grim Patron deck with sparring partners. They only did it out of necessity because they didn't have all the tools to make a full patron deck. But I really want to try and make that happen. You know, you play like uh, Death Lords and Unstable Ghouls and Sparring Partners, and you, you just sub out some of the like mid range stuff of the patron deck. Because That's making a five stuff. five patron with making a five five patron with Taunt and having like mm-hmm. a, a and having like a four ten Death Lord on board. It's scary because you also protect your little patrons, your little baby patrons. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll test and I'll, guess. I'll test it out and I'll get back to you, Crip. Don't worry. All right. Don't test it out in a tournament. I won't. It'll be on ladder. Actually, it might be in the next One Nation of Gamers Open, which happens on April 30th. So if you want to play against me and my bolster Grim Patron deck, you better sign up. U.S. only. Sorry, Crip. That's all right. Now, there's a two-card combo here that Astrogation could have, but clearly does not. That would punish this play, and that is uh, Death Spite Whirlwind. Yeah. Doesn't even have a single piece of that. It's got a lot of his uh, a minion-heavy hand here. 
Ooh. Who bad. is right? I see you. Yeah. Uh, another fun fact about these two players like, is... Yeah, I don't know. Um, is Astrogation actually defeated Lead Paint in... Um, Open number three. So that was what the uh, tournament, the round that Astrogation actually got a large portion of his points to qualify for this tournament. So Astrogation actually defeated Lead Paint in one of the other opens, and then the next open, Lead Paint went on to win it. So uh, these guys have definitely have some history in not only Onog opens, but even a lot of opens across North America. They're bo two both sort of similarly placed uh, open tournament players in North America. Yeah. All right. Well, the uh, the patron warrior is losing quite badly right now, but the double eight drop does actually concern me a bit. Yeah, it's a little clunky. Um, but he does have a lot of cards in his deck that he'll be able to play next turn if he picks them up. And, and Rag's gonna do a lot of work. Ooh, whirlwind, but that's a lot of really late. Way too late. And actually, it's it's not. I think not if too he, late. If no, if he Grim Patron whirlwinds and executes the creeper, the juggles are going to potentially proc more. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. Grim Patrons. He has to get a yeah. bit lucky here. Oh, that's yep. good. That is good. And that's also good. What would you say about? Three patrons. <laughs> well, they're not full health yet, but um, two of them. Does actually, yeah, it does actually seem like uh, the warrior has an out here. That whirlwind draw was was huge. I mean, it it was not. Usually, whirlwind is a lot better than what we just saw. <laughs> yeah, but it it was just barely good enough. It seems. Yeah, yeah. Being able to make you know three patrons from a, from a single whirlwind is. I just, no, I just want to add, there is a potential lethal here. Um, it would be... 1 out of 5 to the power of 4. So 25 squared. Alright, Crip's got his one, one literal in 6, calculator. 25. 1 in 625 lethal there. Alright. And he didn't go for it. Wow. Nope. No balls. No balls, no confidence in his hydro <laughs> snipes. Not gonna take the one and six twenty five G's lead paint. What are you even doing with your life? I know, right? Well, he's got two battle rages. And he's got an armor smith. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I mean sticking a Grom onto the board is really threatening. All right, this lethal is a little bit more reliable. Um, is it? I think he's gonna. Yeah, I think he's gonna Tyrion. So one and four instead. I don't know. Yeah, but if you miss that one and four, um, there's nothing good that can happen to you, Ragnaros. In in the best case, Grom just eats it up. That's a That's pretty true. bad case. Well, in the best case, you just hit the Grom. And you have a rag you win the game. The yeah, best case you win the game. Second best case you kill the Grom. Yeah, I like Tyrion here because the weapon is is such a big threat as well. Yeah, but it looks like Astrogation is going to be able to deal with this pretty nicely because he does have the whirlwind and he's going to get a, quite a bit of armor. Uh, he's also going to have execute available to be able to throw one of these Grim Patrons in. So that right there uh, might have just locked Lead Pain out out of the game, and he might have. I have to go for that lethal now, depending on... Actually, yeah, I think that's going to be... Okay. Possible. It's one out of six. I mean, it's 100 times better than my earlier uh, math. Yeah. You gotta look at it in the positive light, you know? Alright, here he goes. Can he do it? If you're the receiving player, you... you oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even Astrogation can't help. I don't even know if that's a smile. That that might have been a fit of rage, but that's a uh, whoo. That's a terrible way to go out with a guaranteed win next turn. <laughs> one of the one in six rag. 
All planned yep. by Lead Paint. All planned. Yep, yep. I mean, Lead Paint could have won one in four with a rag. Um, he didn't know all the nasty stuff that was going to happen to him. But if he did, that is one amazing way to be him, your opponent. Yes. Yes, it is. But with that, Lead Paint takes a 1-0 lead and has Druid and Warlock remaining. So both players have very similar deck lineups, the only difference being those first decks that we saw there. So the Secret Paladin for Lead Paint and the Patron Warrior. Here's, here's a question I got for you. Um, doesn't it seem like quite a weakness to always, always, always lead with the Secret Paladin when you play opponents? Uh, I know I've... I've heard Lead Paint speak to this before, and he basically just says Secret Paladin just good against everything. Like it's just gonna win. It's just it's gonna win at some point, and it's probably just gonna win the first game. So that you might as well just lead with it. Professional Hearthstone player advice: just yeah. good, bro. Yeah, exactly. That's that's pretty much what it comes down to. That's <laughs> translation. Translation for the masses. Yep. And maybe, like, he does this in opens to say, well, I'll open with Secret Paladin every time. So everybody, like, pegs him. Oh, he's going to open with Secret Paladin. And then in the finals, he just, like, brings control decks and just opens with Murloc Paladin. In the last feature, yeah, we how, saw way too much Murloc How Paladin. dangerous is this? For okay, I guess it's dangerous. There it goes. It's gone. <laughs> well, I guess on the other hand, Swipe is also a card that really is quite awful in this matchup. Yeah, because often the the one damage to the rest of your uh, your opponent's characters is a good thing, but against Grim Patron it could not be worse. There's sometimes where you can use it as supplemental removal for patrons, like if you wrath one, and mm -hmm. then you can usually swipe down the full health one and the one health one. But yeah, a lot of times the best case scenario is you you pick off a, a frothing berserker. So very uh, good point. doctor room here. Any of the other minions would have. Um, Probably just got executed pretty pretty harshly. Yeah. Crisp Dr. Boom. Perfect play from Lead Paint. Yep. He does get executed still, but those Boom Bots are going to do some damage, I believe. And now that's when execute gone, that makes more room for Ancient of Lore to stick later, so... Boom Bots... Okay. Pretty average hits. Hmm. Well, you just load it here, right? Yeah. Like, not really much to it. Oh, okay. I guess there's not that big of a board to protect with Lothab this turn. Mm -hmm. Um, Lothab... I mean, both get traded into. Maybe he wants to protect the shade from just a weapon hit, since he was since if he's going to trade into the Belcher like that, he wants to try and protect it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem that um, Astrogation has here is he can't just pass the turn. So many but the Grim Patron is so weak right now that I think he might have to. Yeah. Well, what if he, the, fight comes he the bear and weapons down? Okay. Mm. Well, that's a lot of resources used, and now that's both executes gone. Well, it looks really scary if you're the druid. If you're the druid, it's like, oh no, it's starting. Yeah, oh no, if he has a Whirlwind, or another Inner Rage in a Whirlwind, I'm in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. But we can see that he doesn't have those, but what he does have is a Dr. Boom. And a replacement patron. <laughs> yeah. Force of Nature. Mm. Oh, that's... Oh, he's reaching for that the... so quickly. Yeah, it allows him to clear off the Dr. Boom, and the one, the two, two patron but he'd probably clear off the second patron. Nah, that's me. I think I'd go face and try to grab a combo piece. Yeah, but you have to factor in the armor ups, too. Sure. You have to factor in, like, how are you going to win? Otherwise. Hmm, I wonder. 
If he is, hmm, yeah. Force of Nature would just clear off the boom bots and the patron. I don't think he's gonna clear the boom bots. I think he's gonna clear one boom bot and he's gonna throw the two two into Doctor Boom because it's really hard to do seven damage normally. Yeah, and he can also hear a power, which is. Yep, that's exactly right. Huh, if he, uh... I guess that makes sense, because he just wouldn't have killed the second Boombot if one of the, if the first Boombot that he killed with his hero power got killed. There you go, two mana, get an extra card this turn. It's a good deal. Now, you really want a Death Spite, but it kind of sucks. Death Spite and just hit face. Yeah. I mean, you, you get the Acolyte, and then you get the Grim Patron next turn as well. I think that's the play. I think you have to hit face with your Death Spite. Because you get you get three draws next turn. You get your turn, you get, uh, you get the Acolyte, and you get potentially something else if you can activate, like a Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Up to three turns. Up to three draws. So it might feel like you want to draw here with Ancient of Lore, but oh, no. then it just dies to the Death Bite. So I think he, Ancient of War is an automatic play here. You can maybe choose to anger fit. 10-5. <laughs> and so it's just you're back in the same spot. I guess you get closer to combo, though. Like closer to killing him with combo. And now... Oh, good in... thing you did. <laughs> yeah, good, good thing. The ultimate punish to the uprooted ancient of war. It's the top tech BGH. Now, even if he wants to, uh, he has to attack into the ancient. I guess it damages it, but he doesn't have an execute to remove through it. So even if he draws, even if, if he gets like multiple draws here, he still won't have enough whirlwind armor stuff. Not quite. Whoa! Is that it? That That's is it. it. Exactly 15. Wow. Off the top. And what ways for Astrogation to go out? That is an incredibly tilting a, experience. I think it's a really, really good matchup for the Warrior. Like, I didn't really think about it, but I think every time I've seen this matchup, the Warriors won it. Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, you know, Druid doesn't really have terrible matchups. Their worst matchups are like 55 to 60% in, in their opponent's favor. Uh, just because they can always do Druid things, but yeah, I, I do like Patron in that matchup. I think Patrons are really strong against against Druid, but uh, well, it's it's not when that behind. So I mean, the Zoo deck is is really bad. Like we talked about Druid being bad against Grim Patron, Zoo Warlock is extremely bad against the Grim Patron. So I would imagine Astrogation is at least going to get a couple points on the board here. But uh, it is difficult to beat a Zoo Lock three times, especially when that's what you're bringing as well. And especially if your last deck is a druid, uh, yeah. it becomes uh, even tougher. So, I don't know. Astrogation's got to get some, some fortune on his side if he's going to want to pull through in this one. And Lead Paint looking good to move through to the Decider match if he just wins one more one more game, one game with this Zoo Warlock. And that's exactly what's going to be. Astrogation's throwing out the Patron once again. All right, that is an okay patron hand, I guess. Oh, that's really good now, that frothing. Ooh. The thing is, patron is often very passive at the start, unless you get a fiery war axe. And he doesn't have one. Hmm. So it seems like the zoo warlock will get some stuff on the board, and that stuff has a lot of synergy. He's got Argus on Egg. He's got Knife Juggler on Implosion. Yeah. Well, realize that he doesn't need to attack in to prime it for the Knife Juggler just because he would have played Fireworks on turn two had he had it. All right. Are you ready for the coin implosion for two double knife juggle face? Yeah, I'm ready for it. You know, judging by his his good fortune so far, uh, there's a 
decent likelihood that he just removes this anyway. No, it's three. Yeah. No, even with terrible juggles, you're good here. Yeah. But getting getting that good juggle is a really big deal. Well, it might not be if you run up against Whirlwind. But yeah. if it's if you're not up against Whirlwind, that last juggle is um, a very nice little piece there. Yeah. Well, you have basically no plays as warrior, so you just you just do what you can here. It's gonna be acolyte execute. We're gonna pass. He's not gonna execute. Well, that makes sense on one end because you want to draw more, but. On the other hand, you're also going to take a lot more damage. Yeah. Maybe he's thinking that if Lead Painter has to trade his juggler into it, or play a minion to trade up and risk giving him multiple juggles. So Lead Pain might just be thinking about using Power of Warming to deal with this Acolyte of Pain. Give I'm it one draw, preserve the knife juggler. I'm going to call it here. No, he's going to execute there. It means he's going to lose for sure. <laughs> Okay. I'm serious. His entire it's... hand is five draw. Oh. Ten damage or something. Like that. That. Yeah, that we, we're to already or not was worth at least ten damage. Yeah. Well, right now he's already taken five extra from the knife juggler. Yeah. Because he took the three attack from the certain plus two juggles from the Nerubian egg and the flame imp. So, and if he executes it this turn, then I mean. <laughs> well, executing this turn is actually still okay. Yeah. So he basically took five damage for no reason. For absolutely no reason. And that he's just going to armor up. That's a very clunky. This is where chat spams greed. Greed, 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 greed. <laughs> That's only for you. Oh, uh, okay. My for Argus. Well, Argus, excellent synergy with the egg. Very difficult to deal with that. And now, even if Astrogation manages to find a turn where he can build up a lot of patrons or like re start removing stuff, it, he's still going to be so low to the point where just a burst card is going to kill him. Yeah. So uh, he needs you know multiple turns of stabilization in order to be able to push through. And that's a slightly clunky draw from Lead Paint, but both Sea Giant and Lothab are very powerful plays. I kind of like can't Lothab play here. multiple stuff. I, I like Lothab, I think. Um, usually when the Warrior's this low is when he has to do a lot of crazy combos to come back on the board. Mm -hmm. And if you play Lothab, it basically stops like two-thirds of those combos from happening. But also, if you play Lothab, it means you have less power on the board and, and the turn where you're going to be trading in a lot of your board in order to kill the Belcher. But I guess you're, you'll still be left with a 4-4. Four, four. So you trade in this, then the Flame Imp, and the 1-1, one, one, and then you're left with a 4-4, four, 2-2, four, two, two, and a 8-8. Eight, eight. So maybe things are like no weapon, like from nothing, from no hand. No, I think the idea is, now that I see it, um, he just wants to threaten me for next turn. Instead, yeah. he gets BGH'd, so that feels pretty bad. Yeah, but now he gets to play the Lothab, and now it's going to lock out a lot of stuff. Ooh, but... Uh, I don't think he'll play the Lothab. Yeah. And I think he might lose because of it. I think that implosion is like a trap draw. Like, ooh, implosion! Oh, we can't fail to kill this minion! And then you realize it actually cost you the game. And I think it very well could here. Um, Astrogation has the one opening he's been waiting for the whole game. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well that's Astrogation conceding, and he has been eliminated from feature tournament number two. The first player to be eliminated. Uh, he'll still go away with four Geico points. That's actually pretty good. I mean, Geico points are actually not that easy to accumulate. Yeah, you're right. They're not. <laughs> All right, bro. All <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, pretty good stuff, though. Um, we still have some more games ahead. Uh, this was the losers round, so that means Lead Paint has a one and one score, which is tied with Jab. So they will be uh, they will be playing uh, up in the, our next match. 
for the second seed into the finals. This is uh, this is Group A. A and we have uh, one one player left to left to advance. Yeah, it should be a good one. Uh, that's going to be a good matchup coming up. Uh, during the break, make sure you guys head over to gagco.ong.gg and turn to win that Cyber Power PC. And as a reminder from earlier, uh, next week, ONOG will be at PAX East in Boston. So if you're in the area, if you're going to be at PAX East, make sure you stop by the booth. Uh, check out some, meet some of the players from Archon, uh, Team Liquid, and Cloud9. Get stuff signed. Get some of your Geico gear signed. And uh, it should be, a, should be a fun time. We'll also be casting a major, uh, ONOG's first, and Geico Gaming's first major that will be broadcasting. So that will be right here on this channel. Uh, we'll be casting that, that major live. So a lot of great players are going to be playing in that. But we are going to be going to a quick break, so don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, the final match for Group A of feature number two will happen right after this.